Everybody wants to talk about Schrodinger's cat. I heard a funny story from Jim Hartle, who once talked to Schrodinger's daughter. And she said, I think my father just didn't like cats <laughs> because he invented this famous thought experiment where he says we put a cat in a box and we basically give it a 50-50 chance of being killed through some quantum mechanical probability. If you took the predictions of quantum mechanics at face value, his thought experiment says that in this box, before you open it up and measure it, there's neither an alive cat nor a dead cat. There is a superposition. It's a case where when you're not observing, you don't know what's happening. The quantum equation allows you to imagine the cat being alive or dead, and there's a superposition of those two states. A radioactive nucleus has a certain probability of decaying over the next minute. If you wait one minute, it will be a superposition of decayed and not decayed, where you could expand this superposition to include a cat. The Geiger counter is linked to a vial of poison. So if the Geiger counter detects decay, it will release the poison and kill the cat. After one minute, since the nucleus is a superposition of decayed and not decayed, and since it's linked to the fate of the cat, the cat is now a superposition of a dead and a live cat. And that superposition collapses only when we open the box and look at it. It's the act of observation that makes one or the other one come true. The whole reason why we need a whole field called interpreting quantum mechanics is because in quantum mechanics, there's a whole nother set of rules for what happens when observer measures something. And for years and years, people thought that this meant that the observer was somehow special. And I think that increasingly we're realizing that it doesn't mean that at all. There is nothing special about observers. I don't like the word observer. The acting agents are here first. From my point of view, I think the observer is central. The Everett interpretation says that every time I observe a single quantum measurement, the universe splits into two copies where either option became true. There is something called the wave function, which describes the cat as being in a superposition of alive or dead. And Everett says, take that seriously. It's not just a calculational device, it's reality, that wave function. And if you believe that, then not only cats and electrons, but you and I can be in superpositions of different possibilities, and the universe can be in superpositions of different measurement outcomes. So there's a you that ended up seeing the cat alive. There's another person who ended up seeing the cat dead. You and that person share the same past, but you're not the same present. So the way that we have of talking about observers is very different in Everett. It becomes kind of an absurd universe that even if I strive towards a particular goal, since the universe is a superposition of all possibilities, I know I will succeed in some branches and fail in some others. It's a worldview that a number of people want to adopt, I think, for moral reasons. This worldview that takes the weight off of my shoulders. Well, I did what I did because I had to do it. I was bad because I went down this branch. I was good because I went down this branch. It takes away all responsibility for our personal actions. In my own view that I call Cubism, capital Q, capital B-ism, the actions of agents, people like us, actually make a difference in the world. Agents come first, the actors in the play of nature, and they use quantum theory as a way of making better gambles about what's going to happen to them. I think that Objective reality consists only of conscious observers and, and their interactions. Each agent cannot deal with that infinite complexity. And so it has to data compress all of that information, and it does it into a user interface, which we call space-time and physical objects. So on your computer, you have a nice desktop, and if you're editing an email, the icon for that might be a blue rectangular icon in the middle of your screen. But does that mean that the email itself in your computer is blue and rectangular and in the middle of the computer? Of course not. Any, anybody who thought that misunderstands the point of the user interface idea. It's there not to show you the truth, the diodes and resistors and all the megabytes of software, all the voltages and magnetic fields. All that nasty complexity, it's there to hide it. We have to turn around our intuitions here. Consciousness is first. Space, time, and matter are symbols in our minds. They're tools that we use and we mistake them for the fundamental nature of reality. We're addicted to the symbols of our interface. Every experiment in the history of science has spoken to the existence of a tangible, external, objective reality. Quantum mechanics in the Everettian form says, yes, that's exactly what there is, no problem. Of course we would still like to understand consciousness. That is not a reason to throw out thousands of years of successful thinking about the physical world. 
in 50 years or a century, will we still be there arguing about different <laughs> versions of the interpretation of quantum mechanics? Some people will say that the different interpretations are also different physical theories, that it can be, in principle, differentiated. But maybe they can't, and that's a big problem. Maybe we have to accept that and embrace it. Maybe there are different explanations, there are different ways to interpret any reality. Sometimes you're on a highway, and the highway carries two different numbers. It's, it's at the same time an interstate and a state road, and at some point they will fork. While you're on the stretch that is as both numbers, it makes no sense to argue which road you're on. So could it be that we live at the same time with, in a universe that where consciousness is fundamental, but also where matter is fundamental, there are observable facts, but then there will always be a large or infinite number of different explanations for any given observations, and maybe that's what we will be forced to accept in the future.